Welcome to Anorlando. I'm not going to be showing off all of it, just a little bit. This is the cathedral, which there's really nothing too exciting going on here, other than sniping some painting guardians. The only reason why I'm pointing this area out is because it's one of the important intermediary steps here, although actually it'll turn out not to be that important. But this is where we get a pretty useful spell, and if you're just going to about uh, 15 or 16 intelligence for the Ulysseo Catalyst to get a buff, this is the buff that you're going to want. Uh, we're going to have to go get it though. That ladder will actually block shots, you can see it just hovering in the air there. The problem with arrows is that they have that fall-off time, and exactly how quickly they fall off um, in terms of losing their arc, that sort of thing, is based on the arrow and on the bow. Uh, feather arrows, for example, will retain their, their height uh, for quite some distance. Uh, large arrows, despite being fairly strong, uh, will fall off a lot quicker than expected. I tried homing soul mass here, and it is actually pretty useful, but you'll notice that if it doesn't stagger the hits like that, where it just happened to hit one then another, the damage doesn't add up quite as much as it should be. I'm not sure what the deal is with the homing spells, but they work a lot better on bosses than they appear to work on regular enemies. So despite all the buffs, uh, you wouldn't think the damage is all that impressive on that hit, but it's a lot more impressive against a boss. I really couldn't tell you why that is. It must have something to do with either the size of, of the bosses or something to do with the way boss health bars work. We shall see exactly how useful that is fairly soon. Now there is one downside to using home and soul mass on some of these guys, which despite having pretty decent range, if it all hits at once you see the damage wasn't as good as if they had all hit staggered. Plus he was able to just heal himself. Certain uh, enemies have Estus. It seems to only apply to enemies who are considered to be undead humans. So for example these painting guardians are apparently undead. Just like the hollows. Although these guys probably aren't hollow, I don't know for sure though. You can't really tell. They have a chance of dropping their entire armor set. Uh, the hood, the pants, I think there's gloves as well as a chest piece. Now you can see Soul Spear did a whole lot more damage than uh, Homing Soul Mass did. Yet if you watch the Iron Golem video, you know that uh, Homing Soul Mass did a lot more damage to the Iron Golem. Again, I don't know why that is. But when it comes to boss killing, uh, the Homing spells are just amazing. And they're also very easy and very safe. Uh, you can just use them to uh, cast them, and then just sort of run around playing it defensive on the boss. They'll attack the boss automatically, that sort of thing. Now that chandelier we cut down has the great magic weapon spell on it. You'll want to go down and get that from the cathedral. To do that, you just lower this. However, we're going to jump ahead here. I'm just going to show off a couple of tricks for getting through the uh, part of Anorlando here past that. These uh, giant sentinels are pretty annoying. They can be hard to deal with. But there's a trick, so to speak, which is that they don't have a very large aggro radius. And if you can kind of exploit exactly what that radius is, they will actually just stand there while you shoot them in the head. Like any humanoid enemy, their heads are more vulnerable to arrows. Um, it takes several hits to cause them to stagger like that. Um, a headshot on most humanoid enemies will cause a stagger on the first shot, but in this case it won't. Still. You can see, you can just kill this guy and he will never, ever respond. This one's going to be easier to hit because his shield's not in the way. And again, he won't do anything. Now if you are a bit closer, they will uh, respond to it. And I'm not using a fog ring or anything, this is just a range thing. The best choice here would be feather arrows, you can hit them from the furthest distance. But again, the giant sentinel is very easy to clear out just from out of their range. Uh, you can do something similar to the lesser demons, but the thing is they're going to notice you and attack you. Still, it's possible to, if with headshots, actually stagger lock them. I don't think I'll be able to do it with large arrows at this distance because the damage isn't good enough, but I get two headshots in on him before he even came towards me. And a third hit just kind of on the shoulder there. 
which left him pretty much exposed. Very easy to take out. These guys can be quite dangerous. Their jump attack's very strong, and they're pretty relentless attackers. But magic does pretty well on them. Now you might be wondering, wait, wait, why are you using Soul Spear? You know, you're not going to have any charges left for the real threat in Anorlando, which is, of course, the Silver Knight Archers, who there's one of them under that uh, buttress thing on the other side. Can't really see it from here, but if you are over here um, making noise and uh, visible, they will shoot and start shooting at you. In this case, if you run straight down without moving forward too much, I think they don't notice or they lose interest. But there's another trick we can do to make sure that they don't notice us at all. That's to equip the Fog Ring, which we uh, traded with the Crow for that uh, Skull Lantern, and a Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, which was from uh, Sense Fortress. With both of these, you pretty much have maximum stealth. Um, there are things the Fog Ring won't stop, like making noise from footsteps if you run too fast, or uh, just general clanking of armor that the Dragon Crest Ring will handle, but the Dragon Crest Ring itself doesn't prevent people from spotting you from a large distance. The Fog Ring, however, will cover that. Uh, combined, you kind of get something akin to the, the uh, Thief Ring effect in Demon Souls. It's not as powerful as those. Now you can see, there's the one on the buttress, and there's the one up there standing on the, uh, the device there. So, let's get rid of these guys the cheap way, and this is what I bought all those poison arrows for. Yes, we are just going to poison them. This is the slow but sure way, and you want to be standing down here. There's a couple reasons for that. It's further away than uh, some of the other places you could go, but uh, because of the distance, it actually has some advantages. And uh, what I'm doing here is using large arrows, because I have more of them, to try and kind of orient myself. See, I'm able to hit the area where he's standing, and now I see, ah, that little green flash there means I hit his body. I didn't do any damage because of the range, but that doesn't matter. Because with poison arrows, you don't actually need to do any damage. The poison damage will accumulate no matter what. Oop, shot him right in the dick. That's good. We just need two or three, and he's poisoned. The poison will do several hundred points of damage over, over a few, few minutes, so he's going to die. He hasn't even noticed us, actually. That's how far away we are. The fog ring no doubt helps. He would have noticed us a lot sooner had that not happened. But you can also see that I had to readjust my trajectory anyway because of the uh, difference in the flight time uh, and flight path of the poison arrows, which seem to have a better range, actually. There, I hit him on the foot. Just perfect. Oh, two foot shots. Okay, now this one noticed me and he is shooting at me, but you'll notice I did not get knocked back. That's because if you're standing right here in this pavilion, you are so far away from the uh, Silver Knight Archers that their uh, great bow shots do not reach you. They can't quite get to you. So just for fun, let's take off our stealth. And let these guys know that we know that they're there. Just run forward a bit, get their attention. Hey guys! Yep, just gonna stand back here. Whoop. Try again. Gotta aim better than that, boys. Yep, so, they're gonna die. There's absolutely nothing we need to do at this point, except hang out. Roll around, have some fun, swig some Estus, and go into speed mode here. Is this cowardly? Yes. Is this cheap? Yes. But look how effective that is. Now I'm sure people would say, you could just rush up there. And you could. But this way is foolproof. I also went and equipped the Gold Serpent Ring before the second one died, hoping to maybe get a Silver Knight drop from him. Uh, I don't think the Silver Knight Archers drop very much, that's any good. They can drop uh, arrows for the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, which you can get uh, further into Anorlando, uh, kind of close to the boss. Dragon Slayer arrows can be bought anyway, and you would need to buy a significant quantity of them. Uh, and the, the Great Bows are not very good unless you have a very high strength quality build. Uh, in other words, you have enough dexterity to actually use the bows, but you also need strength to wield those bows. They are extremely strong, especially uh, the new one in the uh, new area. 
for the PC version, there's now two great bows, and they're both very good. But the strength requirements are just crazy. Uh, they're, they're pretty high. Even so, uh, if you happen to have like a build that's designed around a Black Knight weapon, which tends to require high strength and high dexterity, it's not a bad choice. It's certainly very strong, and it knocks things back. Now, something I never noticed, if you look in through these windows uh, up here, you'll actually be able to see Solaire and the bonfire. So the bonfire room that you get into right when you get past this area through the fog door, you can look in there on the area where the archers are. Now for some fun. I've gotten a Silver Knight shield and used all the Twinkling Titanite I've got to upgrade it. Silver Knight shield is one of the better shields in the game. Um, it's got good stability for what it is. The weight is a little more than I'd like. I think it's five. Uh, I've been using the heater shield for two to help me roll a little better. But it should be alright. So here we are in front of Smo and Ornstein. Uh, one of the hardest fights in the game and one of my favorites. Uh, one of everybody's favorites. It's just a cool fight. Now how are we planning to prepare for this? What tricks are we going to be using? Well, we're just going to be using straight up sorcery with the soul masses. Just to show you a taste of what this will look like in its final form. Because this isn't even close to maximum power. Alright. Ornstein and Smo. Uh, it can be a little tricky to decide which one you want to kill, simply because, as you can see, Ornstein took the brunt of that one just by charging in front. I actually want to kill Smo first. The logic behind this is that Ornstein drops the Leo Ring uh, if he's killed last, and uh, I'm not really planning to use either of their armors, so it doesn't really matter. Or their weapon, so... Smo is usually easier to hit. Um, his hammer can block the soul masses, so that can be a problem. Otherwise, you just kind of lead him around and let the soul masses shoot him in the belly. So you can see each one is already doing uh, almost 1300 damage. And that's with very minimal buffs, just power within and the two equipment buffs. Red Tear Stone would be stronger, a better Catalyst would be stronger, uh, all sorts of things. Anyway, with Smo dead first, we get Super Ornstein. Uh, Super Ornstein is. 15, 20 goddamn feet tall, and shoots lightning, and gets some of Smo's moves. But I still think he's easier, although a lot of people say they have much more trouble with Super Ornstein. But with Sorcery, he's a chump. He'll do the lightning butt, butt slam, it's pretty easy. He'll charge again, just kind of sidestep him, hit him in the chest. He doesn't block very well. Smo's hammer can be quite a pain. Ornstein's spear just doesn't block well enough. Now that could have been dangerous. Got hit there. But Silver Knight Shield has a lot better stability than the heater, so it, it just comes out. So just back up, let him hit. Now one of the nice advantages to the Soul Masses, as you saw, it's kind of like having a spear. You can have your shield up, uh, but still be attacking. And then you just fall back to a safe position and recast the Soul Mass. Since they're automatic, and they won't attack until you hit something, Nice and easy. And that was indeed the first attempt on those guys. They're just not really that hard with sorcery. You could accomplish the same thing with pyromancy, um, but Smo is a little resistant to fire compared to that and Ornstein the lightning. Just for fun, let's invade Lautrec to get the Firekeeper soul back. We'll pump up on soul mass and cast a greater magic weapon on our Baldur side sword. Making it nice and nice and chunky. Doesn't quite kill that sealer. It's kind of unfortunate because he can be a pain, but we'll just deal with him. There we go. 237 on the hit. That's not bad at all. It's not even as good as it could get. We'll try and peel Lotric off from his buddies. Kind of difficult. Oop. That could have been dangerous. Lotric's uh Chotel there, uh, that can punch through your shields, and you, uh, since you're considered to be a Dark Moon Invader here, you can't use your Estus, if you are essentially considered an invader. But you can do pretty good on there. Now, you notice that uh, Lotric got a glow around him. I think he uses the Tear Stone Rings. I can't, know, I can't tell if it's the blue or red, but he's more dangerous when he's at low health, so you want to avoid that. All you have to actually do is kill Lotric. Oop. You can see you can actually afford a cast uh, of uh, Soul Mass. Now, I got killed here but I'd already won, uh, so I'll actually load up there. Now for more fun, uh, here's Framped, he's asleep. I could wake him up by kicking him, but instead, what I'm going to do now that I have the Lord Vessel is just drop down this hole. 
And if you drop down the hole where uh, Frampt is, which sometimes he'll leave an empty if you attack him or something like that, you'll end up at Firelink Altar where you place the Lord Vessel. So you don't actually need help from Frampt or Koth uh, to actually reach the Lord Vessel Altar. You can place it on your own. Now you might wonder, what do Frampt and Koth think of you if you decide to place the Lord Vessel on your own without their help? Well, let's find out. Main thing about placing the Lord Vessel is you, you need to have the Lord Vessel in order to teleport. But you have to actually place the Lord Vessel in order to unseal the four uh, endgame areas. Which will be shown in sequence with those gold fog doors. This one's the Tomb of the Giants, so it unseals the area to Nido. Duke's Archives, which is where we're going to be going next. That's Seat's area. That's the Demon Ruins Gold Fog Door that we saw. That leads into Lost Isolith. And I guess technically you don't need to go to the fourth area because it's a new Londo which isn't sealed. So let's work back to Firelink from the Lord Vessel. And go talk to Frampt. Let's see if he's mad at us or if he even noticed. Sorry, fool. You could not be the chosen one. Enough. I shall slumber until I am awakened again. This is actually the same thing Frampt will say if you side with Koth, uh, and he'll leave. Koth also should be disappearing, I think. 